<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Alara Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that you are here with us to share and talk and experience. And today we have our good friends, um, Paul and Holly Marwood, here with us today talking about the universal sphere. And um, we're going to talk about that you know, great, great greater detail, but I have to tell you, before we even get started, about the universal sphere, because I am a practitioner. <laughs> Yay. And um, I love the energy. Oh, and we're going to actually connect in with Ishtara. Ishtara is going to be coming on the show too. Holly's going to be channeling Ishtara. So yay, I love Ishtara's energy. Oh my God, I remember the first time that you channeled her during the training, Holly, I was like, oh, I love this. I, I know her. You know, it's like there was this, connection right away with uh, with Ishtara and her being. It's like, oh, wow. It was really expansive. So I'm so glad that we're going to do that again this time. Because, um, you know, I'm an I'm a energy whore. I think, I, can <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> we're, I think we're in can, good company. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can say that out loud. Yeah. Um, I love energy, right? So I'm all about energy. And when I experience an energy that's so expansive and light and empowering, um, yeah, that's, I like that. So I'm all in, right? That kind of thing is I'm, I'm all in. So um, I just want to, for those of you who may be watching later or listening later, um, to tell you a little bit about Holly and Paul. So um, Holly Hawkins Marwood, is an advanced certified Akashic record teacher and reader. Oh, Holly, we've never done that together. It's like, <laughs> mm, it's on my list. <laughs> um, Holly's also a conscious channel for the High Council of Orion, the, angel the Archangelic Realm, and many more. And Holly facilitates guidance sessions, workshops, and seminars, both locally and internationally. So, you know, internationally, I'm international. <laughs> so you, you might want to come to Vienna. We'll see. I would right? love to. Let's do it. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> That'll be so much fun. Um, and Paul is a certified advanced Akashic Records reader, an international speaker and trainer in spirituality, energy medicine, healing, and transformational soul and life guidance. And Polly and Polly, Paul and Holly are the co-founders of four, wow, multidimensional transformational processes to help you move to greater alignment with your inner guidance and assist you to fulfill your life purpose and desires with expanded consciousness and ease. They are also co-founders of something that is so easy and unlimited, it will blow your socks off. It's called the Universal Sphere, which they are going to talk to us about today and share with us. And we're also going to experience um, a group Universal Sphere process, right? So Holly and Paul, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Alara. We're so happy to be here with you again. We're so excited to be with you. <laughs> Me too. And this is weird because uh, you know, normally we, we've done audio calls, right, in the past. And yeah. for the Awaken to Happiness Now show, it's been all audio because that's, that's all the people wanted. But then I was like, I, I've been wanting to do video for a long time. So I'm so glad that Lori yesterday did video with me because I just love video. You know, I was saying that I, I am much more engaging <laughs> on video and um the energy you know my energy really comes across more when i can move my hands and stuff right so and i tend to smile and laugh more when i'm i'm on video for some reason <laughs> i don't know it's more fun right so um we, we're just really play it. we're visual people you know we we, we really respond to everything visual and when we can connect it just cr deepens our connection i think I, I i agree right the italian comes out and all the, the hands <laughs> don't <through it. laughs> somebody asked me if i was italian i was like no because uh, i was just in italy and they thought i was italian it's like no i am indian and we also talk with our hands and you know all that wonderful stuff so um it's hard for me to keep still you know and just do nothing so I was like yeah whatever so I'm so glad that we get to do this visually too because for me experiencing energies um, I find when it when it's a visual experience like this as well for me it's even more so it's, it's like there's just like you said a deeper connection it's, you know and it's like um, I'm connecting with you I'm connecting with the energies and 
I guess my, I'm more present. <laughs> I'm kind of like saying, hmm, does that mean I was never present on the audio shows? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> now I'm more present and I like that. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about you guys, first of all. So for the, because there are, you know, people that don't know you. So can you talk a little bit about not just the universal sphere, but um, soul genesis, for example? Ladies first. Okay. Um, well, you know, soul genesis originated with really Paul and I coming together. Um, we've been together now. Eight years. Eight years, seven mm -hmm. and a half years. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our ages, our, our chronology, planetary chronology, we haven't been together that long, but it was kind of like this explosion when we came together. So soul genesis really is the evolution of us bringing our gifts and talents together. And the idea, the foundation, I love the question around that because soul genesis is us, the genesis of us living into our soul level truth, transcending the boundaries of just our human limitations mm -hmm. and really discovering and living while we're still embodied here from the bigger place of our soul. So, I mean, that's kind of the name of our business. And what we do, is, as your intro already said, is we work in the Akashic Records with people and even more fun is teach people how to read their own Akashic Records. And um, beyond that, then we have all these soul activations because of the connection with the non-physicals who've already ascended, who are here guiding us in our ascension, not to do it for us, but to guide us in, to ease our way through this pathway to make it as graceful as we're growing into our soul level awareness. So everything we do, whether it's the soul activations, the universal sphere, the Akashic records, working with the angelic realm and the crystal bowls, all of it, everything we do, is the foundation of it is us evolving into a conscious place of living from our soul level experience. Nice. And I think, you know, everything Holly said, and, <laughs> you know, I, I really see Holly and I as being essentially <clears throat> where we're at now in our lives and our soul purpose is simply the conduits at this dimensional level to bring higher information through um, to assist us all in this time of ascension. You know, we have, again, we're not alone. We're not separate. You know, as soon as we start to realize that, that we really are all together a, on the planet, but also we've got so much help from the higher realms and they've been there, they've done this, that they know about ascension. So why not tap into the wisdom of like our great grandparents, for example, but, but I don't, I mean that in the sense of like the high council of Orion who ascended many, many millions of years ago, mm -hmm. they've got some really cool information, some amazing assistance that are so simple and yet so profound to help us. So you know, I just love being here doing my part and allowing the information to come through and sharing it with all of the beautiful, lovely souls like we have on today and who will be on the replay. You know, this is um, helping us all to ascend together. So bring it on, I say. <laughs> bring it on. Absolutely. And, you know, this whole ascension thing, and, you know, I say thing, but it's like, it's not just you know, a thing that happens once. It's like we're, we're, we are evolving every single day with every choice that we make, with every activation that we do, with every healing, you know, in every moment we are ascending, right? And if, you, if we can all recognize that, it will kind of take the significance away from it a little bit, right? So that, because sometimes I find people are judging themselves for not being more ascended, you know, kind of thing, right? Or they're judging themselves and, and um, being hard on themselves for not doing as much healing as they would like to do or as many processes or activations or this or that that they would like to do. And it's like, no, it's not about that. <laughs> you know, it's also, you're also still supposed to be living your life and enjoying life and having fun at the same time, right? Exactly. It's about embodying it here and now and not needing to escape from this. And that that's so much of what it is, is like people want to get out of here yes. because they want to escape the pain. And what we're 
doing is as we expand into more, we embody more and we can have a whole different perspective on being here now, not waiting for salvation at some other time or place after some magical experience is, is us really embodying it. And, you know, people talk about this. I'm going to just bring this up now. Our systems are have been designed and we've had lots of incarnations in a 3d vehicle so part of the reason this time piece it seems excruciating is we can see and know and desire where we want to go and yet and all the activations and energetic work are really tuning up this body to handle the higher voltage so to speak mm -hmm. you know you don't you don't take the 110 toaster and put it in the 220, I'm saying this relative to the United States, to the 220 outlet, you know, that you put your washer or dryer into and think it's going to create toast for you. It's going to just burn it out and you might have a fire. So we want to really honor the process of this, not just that I need to be there now, but what are you gaining and learning in the process that when you, when you're living in that more expanded place, you, you have the richness of all the experiences and all the discoveries and all the uncoverings and all the seeing the rightness of you instead of the wrongness of you. You don't want to sh shortchange that journey of discovery mm -hmm. because it becomes so potent and it becomes really yours when you've discovered it and you've gone through the process of it. So it's a process and not a light switch. But ev like you're saying, every step along the way, we're getting better. And, we're and understanding that's, more. And it's not just about getting to that final destination. It really is about the journey as well, right? And enjoying the journey, being um, not necessarily at peace with the journey, but creating the journey as you go, you know, so that you have ease in the journey and fun and joy and just creation. You know, for me, it's all about creating your life. What would you like to create? You know, how would you like to live? What would you like to experience? You know, you can do that at the same time as you're journeying to that destination, whatever it happens to be, because nobody knows what that's going to be. I know, but I'm totally off tangent. And so on. I just love to like, I love when I go off on a tangent because like, oh, I wonder what this is that somebody needs to hear. <laughs> well, I think also too, Lara, is that, you know, <clears throat> so many of us like want to escape, but that, you know, and I can only speak really for myself, but my experience now of the physical reality is so much more profound than it was, you know, as, as I used to be as an engineer, for example, you know, you kind of just looked at the nuts and bolts and things like that. But, you know, as we evolve and as Holly said, and you've said as well, you know, we encompass more. So we really are living life with so much more joy, so much more love and just being, seeing the perfection and everything because everything really is in this greater state of balance and this greater state of perfection. And as soon as we allow ourselves to enjoy that, the journey, as you just said, <clears throat> excuse me, becomes incredible because we get to have the physical experience and the non-physical experience as well. You know, so we start to operate in multiple levels all at the same time while we're still here. So we get to have a whole lot more fun. It's like, you know, life before might have been three or four colors of the rainbow and now we're seeing 10 colors of the rainbow and we know that there's another 20 colors still waiting you know right around the corner yeah so absolutely life can be that rich and that colorful and that's what i love about you know when you are creating your your life choosing what you want to experience and so on it can be fun but what about <laughs> sometimes um some people are stuck right in patterns and beliefs in, in in their lives and they don't know how to get out, you know, and yeah, there, there really is no uh, band-aid situation, you know, like for real permanent change to happen, something else is required. There's no quick fix. There's no magic pill. There's no, you know, like nothing can fix something just like that. Right. So what, what to you, you know, what, what is the solution for those of us, sometimes I'm stuck too, um, that may be stuck in a pattern or a belief or just stuck in life that they don't know how to get out of or don't know what to do or, you know, and, but they really would like some change. They really do desire change. Do you want me to go first? Um, I, I have a lot. And like you and I could talk and all of us, we could talk for 18 days on this. But, you know, at the highest level, 
you know, one of the things that I'm going to oversimplify this. So please everyone hang in there with me on this because is what we're used to doing is finding the wrongness of a situation. And part of the reason we're stuck in a pattern is we keep trying to solve the wrongness of us. Like this is a problem. This is, and, and it's not to say, you know, I've got my own places of stuckness. Believe me, I'm not above stuckness. Mm -hmm. Definitely have some big buttons in that area too, but it's reframing everything around the what's right about this or so I know that's going to confront somebody. Um, but then beyond that is here's what I've been seeing a huge pattern of recently. And I, I love, it's fascinating when patterns start coming in, in terms of our client sessions. So it means something's up around this. And a lot of times what we're doing is we're in a sense, holding ourselves hostage. I can't feel love or happiness or peace or relief or on my purpose or offering my gifts until these things happen. So what we're trying to do is heal this thing that we've decided is keeping us from what we desire. So one of the things that has been coming a lot up a lot in whether it's channeled or Akashic record readings is when we consider the stuckness that we have, Let's pretend for a moment it's all gone. You're totally unstuck. Tap into how do you feel about you and life if it's gone now? Now, ask yourself how, so we're going to just pretend. I'm going to, it's magically gone. And, and then you say, well, I'm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to be able to feel happy. I'm going to find the love of my life. I'm going to finally feel willing to go out and share my gifts when these things happen. So the challenge then is how can you connect with what you think the reward is now? And so if you say, I can do all these things when this thing's cleared out, what you've done is in a sense, imagine that thing that you want healed. It becomes like a pole. And at the end of the pole, you've hung all the ways you're going to live when that happens. Here's the conundrum about it. If you've made all those yummy things that you desire, sorry, I'm putting my hand in front of your face. All those things you desire out in the future conditional on this thing being cleared up, if you take three steps forward, it's still out in your future. You have not brought it into your reality. So if you, the pattern may still be there, but if you say, what do I think it's going to bring me when it's gone? Discover those things now. So if you feel like you're holding yourself back, waiting for those things to be healed, how, ask yourself, how can I discover that today unconditionally? Mm -hmm. And then what you do is bring those experiences into your now and that stuck pattern, you take off the hook from being your pathway to salvation. And it's just one suggestion of 8,000 I could give, <laughs> but part of it is, it's not the thing that's in your way. So start giving yourself permission to discover it, even if that thing is still there. So they get to coexist in the same space. Can I love? Can I be on purpose? Can I be happy and content and have this thing in my st in space instead of an either or? Yeah, I mean, I just did that process with you, right? As, we, as you were talking and it's like, as soon as you even said, just imagine, because we're just imagining right at the moment, that all those things are not there, right? And what would you experience, right? And it's, it was such an expansive energy, and it was like so much peace and joy, and it's like, ah, I don't know. It's like I could breathe, you know? when that thing that was blocking it was gone, it's like, oh, I can breathe. And so now, if I tap into that energy of, oh, 
oh, that feels really good. It feels so expanded. I can breathe. I, can, I feel free. From that space, I can start to create something different, right? Mm -hmm. It also can, gives us an opportunity to maybe have a different perspective on what stuck looks like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and in a sense, again, take it off the hook. We've, we've put so much pressure on that thing. We've made our willingness to be happy and free and, and breathing and have space that poor thing that's stuck in our life is taking the brunt of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of like, you know, in a way it's not paying attention to it, but in a way it's just taking a bypass. Okay. You know what, honey, you get to stay there, but I'm going to still connect with those things that I'm waiting for. Yeah. Anyway. So that's one way really that you can begin the process of getting unstuck. And it may be that as you say, Oh, wow, I don't know, it feels too big and expansive here. Maybe that thing is a really good thing because that is a little intimidating, but now you have more information to deal with. Your awareness has expanded into, oh, maybe this is supporting me because that feels too big. Okay, so if that feels too big, what's a smaller piece that I can handle right now? Mm -hmm. and, and grow into that. There's so much there. And then beyond yeah. that, we use the universal sphere. And, you know, I know this is about the universal sphere, but, and Paul can talk about this. I'll be quiet now, but, you know, the <laughs> universal sphere really helps us discover a bigger space to live and navigate in and bring in this, this solution energy that we talk a lot mm -hmm. about. And before Paul goes into that, I, I just want to say to everybody first, if, um, if you have a question, you can uh, raise your hand because there's a raise your hand button somewhere. I never find it, but it's there. You can raise your hand or you can just wave frantically um, or, or unmute yourself and ask a question or you can type it into the chat box. Okay, so <laughs> feel free. I, I did write it in, but I know people came in after I wrote that. So I just wanted to let them know that you can ask questions. Because, you know, I will be asking, but you can also ask questions. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Did you want to add to that? That's okay. Well, to raise your hand, just click on participants at the bottom. And at the bottom of the little pop-up of participants, there's a little raise hand. So that's how you do that bit. But coming back to the, the, the answer <laughs> to the, the question is, you know, the, the thing that I really love about this piece is we, we've spent so much time in our mind. You know, we've, let, we've, we've left the Piscean age behind. The masculine experiment kind of failed, you know, it just created greater separation, a lot of ego, you know. So now moving forward to embracing this divine feminine and, and, the, and the balance between so much more powerful. And, you know, I, I love the whole idea now of starting to, you know, allow our, our mind, which is great for keeping the physicality, our body safe, but, but allow it to just be on the side and allow our higher self, our hearts, our soul to guide our life a whole lot more. And, and in that piece, there's an opening up to, you know, what we would call solution energy. So, you know, expanding on what Holly said, you know, instead of saying, you know, this is the problem and this has to be the solution. And if, and, and I'm now stuck because I don't know how to get there or, you know, so we go back into that place of stuckness. But as soon as we start to really embrace the fact that, you know, the universe has got our back, our soul has got our back. It's nothing is plotting against us. Everyone and everything is plotting for us. And as soon as we start to really grasp that and allow solution energy to come in, and this is where the universal sphere is so cool to, to do that, you know, suddenly we can get, enjoy the journey more, relax, like you were saying earlier, by just this, ah, you know, and, and enjoy the journey. And suddenly pieces just fall into place and you go, wow, I don't know how I got there, but I'm there now. That's so cool. You know, mm -hmm. the mind doesn't have to worry about it anymore. It's like, just focus on the really wonderful end result and the, the pieces just tend to fall into place. So it doesn't have to be a, you know, sort of a masculine, this is the solution. You know, it's not, it could be a myriad solutions. And so, as soon as we open up to that, life gets even more exciting. Yeah, I love that. Can I, can I add to that? <laughs> Please. Um, you know, so one of the things that this idea of a solution energy is a lot of times when we're stuck is we're not finding the solution. We, we don't know. And one of the things that we're often doing is deciding that the answer is within the scope of what we already know. Mm -hmm. right. And 
And so we are trying to force a solution like, well, it has to be that. So therefore, if I'm really clear on deciding that's my answer, and then we do all of our manifestations and all of everything, and the key is we need to have the clarity, but this kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Let's hold the clarity of what the desire is and not decide we have to know what the pathway is. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's, so the universe is a unified field, right? It's whole and complete. There's nothing outside of it. It's all there. So, and we are universal beings and we exist within this universal field. We ha we're having a 3D experience that by definition introduces limitation. The intention of the limitation is to create this polarity experience for us to grow within. However, this little slice of 3D is sitting in this unified field. So as we work with bigger energies, we're moving beyond the conclusions that happen within 3D. And that's why we talk a lot about is this energy of solution energy is there are more solutions out there than we have the capacity or understanding at this moment in time. So we want to bring more of that energy into our space so that, you know, what if this is the thing that, you know, we're stuck in achieving this and we keep saying it has to happen this way. It has to happen this way. And we just keep poking at it, deciding it, it is, but what solution energy can do is say, Oh, let me try it this way. And there's the answer. So there can be other ways Mm -hmm. to have more information, a new experience, a new aha moment, a new healing, a new alignment, whatever it might be, that goes beyond what we know and understand in this moment because it's in this larger infinite field. Yes, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, because, you know, we sometimes stay in our heads a lot, right? So we're in our heads thinking, 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 trying to figure it out. And we can't because it's like the solution may, the one that we think it may not be the right one. And that's why we're staying stuck. And so when we are able to tap into the unified field and be open to different possibilities, different solutions, something else may present itself, but only when we get kind of like getting out of our own way right as well i suddenly my my voice suddenly changed it's like what's going on here <laughs> yeah an example of this actually came through in a channeling session recently is um and, I, and i'm going to bring this i'm going to kind of massage this example but somebody was wanting to get out of some financial problems and they had made the decision everyone's going to relate to this because everyone wants more money or doesn't have enough or something, right? Most of us. Um, so they were asking about winning the lottery because now, so here's, here's a perfect example of what we're talking about. They're feeling that money's their solution mm -hmm. and they want a lot of it and they want it to come in like this. So they're deciding they need to win the lottery. Okay. Yeah. Reasonable thing within our 3D construct, right? So windfall energy is available to us through the lottery. And through this channeled session with this person, what came up is you've made a conclusion that that's the only way you, the universe is going to deliver that. And it's sitting within a belief construct within, the, within 3D because what's the belief system around the lottery? It's hard to do. Most people don't. Um, when if you win you're gonna lose it right mm -hmm. yep. and you're gonna be back to square win within two to five years or whatever the statistics are yeah so what's interesting is we love this idea of the lottery but there's a lot of limitation actually around it in terms of the belief system so what they were suggested to do is instead of trying to decide that this is your solution this one pathway become the energy of money mm -hmm. <laughs> and start vibrating and literally becoming the energy of money. And then it doesn't, you don't need to decide it has to come in one pathway. It can come in from an infinite number of ways because if what you desire is the money, you don't need to draw the conclusion about how it comes in, become what you desire. And then it, it, it can come in in ways that can surprise you. Yeah. 
absolutely. And I'm, I'm laughing because I mean, um, I hear that a lot, you know, in, in, in some of the work that I do as well, become the energy of what it is that you desire, right? So become the energy of money. And, but a lot of people, they still see money as just paper bills, right? paper dollars, or some people may see money as gold coins or, you know, gold, but mon the money, it's an energy. Right. <laughs> you know, so becoming the energy of money does not mean you become paper bills, right? Right. <laughs> so I think that's where uh, people get stuck. It's like they're thinking money is just paper bills, you know? Right, but money really is an energetic pathway to bring you to the des destination you want because money isn't the end goal. So no. then you have to go further and say, okay, so now you have your pile of money. Yeah, now what? In whatever form. <laughs> yeah. What is your life looking like because you have that pile of money? Well, now I can do all the philanthropic things I want to do or I can have the peace, I can have the retirement, I can help my family, you know, any yeah. number of answers to that. So how do you become that even? So you just keep it, keep it taking it, keep questioning yourself, take it one step further. So what would that be if I had all that money and now become what, what you, what the money is to you and, and start feeling that vibration. And then you're living in that field of infinite possibilities and not forcing and saying, Okay, universe, I want all this abundance, but this is the only way it can come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We limit our possibilities. Absolutely. <laughs> we do. So how can we change that? And, uh, you know, how can we change that? Well, I think one of the ways we, on, I mean, honestly, we, we work with the universal sphere a lot. Um, many times a day, we're using the universal sphere because it takes us literally using the energy and <laughs> uh, using the universal sphere allows us to vibrate in the field of infinite possibilities. So it, which still includes 3d by the way, mm -hmm. but we're expanding out into a bigger energetic field. So we have an opportunity to dissolve some of the conclusions we have open up to new awarenesses, you know, and I'm sure everyone in the audience knows awareness is absolutely the kingpin of change. Mm -hmm. Once you have an awareness, then you get to make a new choice and you can see, do I love this or not? So the, it expands our awareness to take in more that's already around us. So opening up our awareness to where are my conclusions, what more do I really desire? And then we work honestly a lot with the universal sphere and what the universal sphere does is open us up, but it also dissolves literally some of the old patterns and the subconscious stuff that keeps us in some of those cycles. Um, one of the big things that Ishtar has worked with us with is uh, an Ishtar for everyone is the non-physical who comes through me that brought us the universal sphere, she actually um, talks about worthiness as being the one of the most enormous things we can work with. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and so working with the energy of expanding our worthiness, but dissolving all the lifetimes and experiences that we've had where what we desire on some subconscious unconscious level we feel we're not worthy of and so we, we you work with that too so it, it dissolves the things that are in our way if you will but without us needing to look at each and every single one of them and dissect it it just dissolves them well that's the thing i really love about the universal sphere because it it accelerates that whole process you know as being an akashic record reader myself it's like holly we can analyze one problem at a time, but we can also spend years or lifetimes analyzing all those problems. The thing I love about the universal sphere is you can just go in there and focus on the end results. You know, I am worthy. And then the rest of it just seems to take care of itself and very quickly too. So, you know, we're seeing huge changes in ourselves and the other people in a more advanced program that we teach, you know, literally in, in six to 12 months, you know, so 
but we're all feeling different within ourselves and how we manifest is so much better and easier now. And it's just incredible. But, you know, we understand there's a worthiness piece, but we don't need to know about all of those little, you know, where I was unworthy and mm -hmm. what lifetime I gained this unworthiness and all that sort of, because that also can, you know, we're the worst judges of ourselves. And so we can start to come in and create judgment again, which can then re-enhance a pattern. So yeah. when we're focusing on the really, amazing in goal you know i am worthy for example the rest seems to just take care of itself you know when we're playing with the energies of the universal sphere i love that and it's true because it, it really is about the end result that we're looking for right it's not about the story or how we got stuck in a pattern or, or a belief system or anything like that it doesn't matter the why doesn't matter right it's about what do we want to create now? What, what is it that we want to experience? And it's funny that, you know, you, um, Holly, you started talking about it, um, Ishtara, and I can't talk now, and I'm feeling her, and I'm saying her, because but I'm feeling her energy so strongly. <laughs> it's like, holy smokes. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what, what is Ishara or who is Ishara? No, well, no, it's like, why am I suddenly feeling that energy so strongly? So, whew, wow. Oh, because I, I invited her in to, I invited her in very strongly. I started when I first woke up this morning, but I asked her presence to be very strong today for everyone. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I must have some connection to her because I just like, wow. You know, I can barely talk now. Um, yeah, because you were you were you were back there in the temple of Isis days with us. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Uh yeah, and I'm getting goosebumps now. It's like, yeah. Ooh. Uh, okay, cool. So I know we're going to talk about the universal sphere some more. I know we're going to do a process, and um, um, I know we have. Quite, I know we have a question from Karen, and do we have somebody else on the phone who has a question that is unmuted? Phone number ending in one four seven two. Yes, but maybe so. Um, if not, that's okay. So, and we have a question in the Q and A. So we'll take we'll, we'll just take one or two questions now, and then we'll move forward. What do, what do you think? Or should we? What do you think? Let's talk about. Um, hold on. Uh, so Nick has a question. I'm assuming it's Nick. It could be Nicole, who knows? Can you please speak to mental illness in relation to the ascension expansion path? Fragment itself, brain chemistry, trauma, locked in nervous system, etc. particularly long-term PTSD, depression, anxiety, the looking through, the looping thought trap. I love Polly, Polly, I keep saying Polly. I love Paul yeah, and Holly's <laughs> insight on this as it feels to be impeding my process. Interesting. Wanna... I, I can start. Um, so, I mean, I just, I ha, you know, I, ha, I can give you our perspective on this. And, you know, it's, you guys all know this. It's not a substitute for whatever you need to do to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally and on, or even your health on any level. Um, I'm going to speak, this is actually the first time I've ever said anything like this publicly. So it feels a little vulnerable for me, but I'm being pushed to say this. So first of all, like the fragmented self is, is a good aspect. I'm, I'm looking over at the mm -hmm. question there from Nick. <clears throat> there, some of us actually are not alone in our energy fields. Mm -hmm. So we have company. Yes. I'm not talking about extreme possession, although you could take it out there, but many of us are not alone in our field. And so some of what we're experiencing are some of our company. Now, we can talk for days on why company's there and how it <laughs> happened. And some of us, you know, I, I had company in my field, if you will, when my mother passed. And this was a number of years ago. It was like 14 or so years ago. Um, and I got really kind of off balance and unwell after she passed. Did not make the connection and went to a healer person. And they said, your mother had an entity that she carried with her. 
and you had a soul level agreement to take it on when she passed because she could not pass with the entity in her field. Now this is opening up a whole can of worms, right? But the reality is we're not all alone in our field and for a whole lot of reasons. Now the key is really getting sovereign and taking command, if you will, of our own field and our own body and inviting and commanding and doing whatever we need to do to remove all the comp the non-contributing company that we have in our field. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we can do first. And you know, that's probably another show, but yes. that we can talk about entities another time for sure. Right. And so part of it for us is really getting aware of what's in my space. Is it mine or is it someone or something else or someone else's? It's if you have a thought that is surprising to you, if you have a feeling that you feel stuck with, just start for the fun of it. Just saying, is this mine or is this someone else's? Now, if it's yours, we'll talk about that in a second. If it's someone else's, here's don't evaluate it. Command it out of your energy field. Command it out. And so our energy fields are all different sizes, but imagine it so that it's like at least 10 feet outside of your space, three meters outside of your space. And begin to just command all these things that aren't yours out of your space and start to feel yourself sovereign in your own space. Part of it also has to do with choosing to be fully in your body again a whole nother show but choosing to be fully engaged in your body a lot of us when we've had trauma it's like yeah i'm still here because i'm animating my body but there's a piece of us that has kind of stepped aside from ourselves so we want to reclaim those pieces be fully in our body fully engaged in our physical vehicle that our soul chose and then that allows our energy field to be stronger the other thing is and paul could probably talk to this a little bit better than than i can but we we even have some people in our universal sphere family we call it you know anyone who has learned the universal sphere they're all part of our universal sphere family and we, and we really feel that way but there have been some people who've had some uh, struggles with mental illness and have found that using the universal sphere helps keep them uh, their their sense of personal balance and emotional balance stronger um, as they've been working with the universal sphere. Do you want to address that a little bit? Because you know a little bit more about some of the specifics. Yeah, I mean, I think I think just to expand a little bit. So this isn't a direct answer to what Holly's just said, but you know, we live in a society where let's just take a quick pill and have a quick fix, you know, mm -hmm. but, but that's not, that's not how it works. You know, the reality, once we start to step back, because, because proof shows us, you know, with the medical system, they just want to give us more pills and then we take more pills and we've got to have pills to counteract the pills. And, and then eventually we become this sort of walking zombie because we're, our poor body doesn't know what to do because of all the chemicals we're putting in. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, is, you know, we want a change. So when we, when we, and I always encourage, you know, kind of stepping back a little bit, you know, let's just have a look at the bigger picture here. If we start to change who we are, change our vibration, if we look at the real core piece here, change our vibration, change who we are at our conscious level, everything else just follows on from that. So as our vibration changes and someone might say, okay, well, that's a great idea, but how do you change your vibration? So I'll get to that in a second, but you know, as soon as we start to change our vibration, our whole perception of our reality starts to shift. It's like when we meet that person for the first time, that, that partner, and, and the whole world is like we're bliss bunnies. You know, everything's beautiful. We change our perception and everything's wonderful. And then maybe, you know, two years, 10 years down the track, you love that person, but it's not quite as blissful because our per perspective's changed. So, so what we do is we just work on changing our vibration and then our whole reality starts to change. So the scenario with the, you know, the, the mental health, et cetera, it could be anything. It can be physical health, it can be mental health. It really can be even the challenges in our life. You know, as we are, 
as we start to, in this case, we use the universal sphere, it raises our vibration. It raises the vibration of our consciousness and connects us to our higher self and the unified field. And as we start to do that, we start to operate at a higher level of consciousness, which is all part of this ascension process anyway. This is what we're meant to do. And then, so this is a tool. The universal sphere is a tool to help us in this ascension process. And in fact, it accelerates our ascension process. So as we move to this higher level of consciousness, and this is the piece that I can't directly answer, like as a typical engineer, I need to have sort of, you know, concrete A plus B equals C. But the truth of the matter is, is that as we start to shift our consciousness and our perspective changes, everything changes, how we manifest, how our body is, you know, what people are in our lives, what situations. And I'm sure, if, you know, I encourage everyone in the audience, you know, when you when you're in that space, you wake up and you, you, you start the day with this wonderful space. We tend to keep manifesting wonderful things, mm -hmm. but then if something happens and we get into this bad space, then all we see is frustrating things around us, frustrating people. This person said this, this person cut me off at the, you know, in the traffic lights or blah, blah. And we start to just, and all that is, is when we take a step back and we go, wow, my vibration when I'm upset is lower. So I'm perceiving the lower things. My perception when I'm happy is higher. I see all the happier things. And so, and then our body follows that as well. If we're upset, our body's going to manifest dis-ease, disease. And then if we're happy, we're going to be balanced. They've proved with the HeartMath Institute and many other places, people and institutions that when you're in a better state, your, your, your biorhythms are more regular, your heart rate is more, your heart rate is more regular, your, your brain functions are more regular. So coming into Nick's question and a little bit here as well, you know, it's about shifting our vibration. And, and there isn't a, you know, I can't give you a chemical formula to say this is why this happens. I just know from my own personal experience and from the many, many other practitioners that we have with the universal sphere, that as we do them regularly and shift our vibration, everything seems to just change. Mm -hmm. And it's this is the incredible piece. It doesn't have to be hard. See, our mind operates in a place where, oh, it has to be hard. I have to work hard at this. You know, but it's not, that's not true. The universe doesn't work that way. The universe says yes to everything. So as soon as we focus on the cool things and the wonderful things, the universe says yes and brings us more higher vibrational things if we focus on the problems and the drama the universe is not trying to hurt us it just says okay you're a divine manifester you want drama i'll give you more drama yes yeah. so that you can get clear on the drama or the dis-ease or the unhealth or the mental problems that you have so you know again i'm not saying that the solves and fixes everything in our in our health wise for example coming back to next you know long-term ptsd etc but as a divine being, like Holly said, with the company coming in, if we choose our sovereignty and really realize that and realize that we can make a choice in the moment of anything, I'm presented with two doors, a happy door, a sad door. What door do I choose? So, you know, everyone that's listening to me today, if you have that choice, which door would you choose? You know, happy choose door. The happy door. Mm -hmm. so, so why are we upset? So that's choosing the unhappiness. So I so go, okay, I chose the unhappiness. I do that too sometimes. And I go, okay, I'm in the unhappy door. So what is it that I can learn out of this? And then if there's, if it's, if I'm in my space, I move out of the unhappy door and move into the happy door. And this is the really cool things. We, if we make a choice and focus on the higher vibrational things, the universe just, says yes to whatever we're putting our energy into and our focus into. And so this really does help Nick as far as, you know, being locked into that process, you know, in some ways we need to find a way to break that cycle, break, break that, that, that piece. <clears throat> and it's a choice it comes from us. No one else is necessarily going to do it. Yes. If we've broken our arms, we need the doctors to help fix our arms, but but in most cases in our lives, as soon as we start to focus on the incredible aspects of ourselves, the incredible aspects of everything, we can bring more of that in. And, when, you know, when you were talking just briefly, you know, even about the uh, clearing of the entities, I mean, 
if you can't do it yourself, you can get someone else to do it for you, uh, to assist you, to, to help facilitate that, because that's something that, that, you know, I've learned in two different modalities how to clear entities, because they, it is a common thing, and people think it's, you know, um, really scary and all this kind of stuff, but it's really not, you know, it's really quite basic and easy, and we pick up stuff all the time, because we're such sponges, right, we, we pick up stuff all the time, but we can just as easily and quickly let it go as well and be just safe in our space. Um, safe is well, not even and, the right word. And so, some of the entities and, you know, entities is like a really broad term. Yeah. Um, the, some of these entities, they're not all bad per se. We may have literally on a solic energetic level, hired them in other lifetimes for a really, really, really amazing reason. Mm -hmm. And, but they're no longer necessary. And so now we need to, in a sense, we hired you, now we're going to fire you. So it's like they're non-contributing. So this isn't, you know, Goonie Bird possession type stuff. This is about having, just like you'd have friends in your circle of friends who are positive and contributing to you and the people who weren't contributing, you'd say bye-bye to, it's the same thing energetically. Mm -hmm. It's just opening ourselves up to, to more awareness around that. And, um, you know, and a lot of what Nick is talking about are some pretty serious things that, that obviously Nick has struggled a lot with that. And so it's a big question with a big okay. answer. So we're not trying to minimize any of it by, you know, yeah. Um, and I think for, for Nick or somebody else who may be going through similar types of experiences, it's, you know, there's more involved, you know, there's more uh, different processes that may be helpful, you know, than just yeah. one five minute little thing. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, but, but thank you, Nick, for that question. It, it's, it's great. Cause it is, it is common. Sometimes people are still afraid to ask about that kind of stuff. And it's like, Nope, there is a, there's a way out of it or there, you know, there's, there's something that can be helped, you know, anyways. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank absolutely. Thank you, Nick. Um, so goodness gracious, time goes by so fast. So <laughs> did you want to bring Ishtara in and do a little bit of stuff with the universal sphere? And then um, after that, we can take some more questions because then they'll like actually experience this, the universal sphere the group process perhaps right and then they might have more questions around that or they, there are questions that they have right now might be gone because like oh my god it feels so like good so. <laughs> yeah i think i think so i think what and paul i think paul was going to lead the group universal well, you have to do a channeling now Richard. oh and i'll do it i'll channel now and then paul will do the group process mm -hmm. okay cool great i was, so, I was just reading nick's comment thank you nick yeah Okay, I, I have to put my glasses on. So Nick, I'll, I'll read your comments in a moment. <laughs> um, just, a, you know, f a function of the chronology. <laughs> it's a while Holly's tuning in to <clears throat> Ishtara, just to kind of let everyone know, you know there's generally, a, in a very basic sense, two types of channels. You might have a person that's a conscious channel or a trans channel. So Holly's what we would call a conscious channel. She's still there present in her body. Um, whereas a trans channel tends to pretty much leave their body and the, the, the beings come in and then animate the body themselves. So um, there's, there's certainly Holly's mostly <coughs> present. Her voice seems to change, um, but, um, but she's, she's still here. So. Greetings, great beings of light. And this has been said before, and it will be said again, that this is how you are seen, literally as a being of light. Mm -hmm. And while this sounds like a cliche that's in your world at this time, you are this great being of light who's dropped down momentarily to collect some experiences now take a moment just a tiny moment and your mind is going to want to fight you on this take a moment and imagine yourself 
suspend doubt and decide for a moment that you are a great being of light. Breathe that in. Receive that possibility through your breath and feel what it feels like in your physical body and in this energetic space around you if you allow yourself to suspend your mind's awareness for a moment and bring in the possibility, breathe it in again, that I am a great being of light. And now for a moment, as you allow that to anchor into your reality, what it becomes is not bringing in something foreign, as if you need to stick another appendage on you as a great being of light. But this is how you are seen and known in the non-physical realms. And then feel yourself as having chosen to drop down into this dimension to collect experiences. And think about some of the experiences that you've been collecting. And some of you have been collecting experiences of love, of parenthood, of success, of writing of healing. Some of you have been collecting 3D experiences of challenges, maybe in the area of love, maybe in the area of your health, or as has already been said, maybe in the area of your emotions. And if you shift the awareness for a moment to say, I'm a great being of light who chose to come in to collect experiences, can you feel how that takes some of the edge off of it? Some of your need to judge yourself for having these experiences, because in the field of who your true essence is, if you tune into yourself in that field of light, the experiences you're having dim. They do not take away from your essence. They are literally experiences that you're collecting. And the question then comes up, why in the world would I choose to collect these experiences? Because I have a strong opinion that I don't like these experiences. And from a human perspective, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because some of those experiences that you've had have been challenging, have been hard, have been endurance tests. No one would argue that from the perspective of being in 3D. But now, if you look at it from the outside and say, look at these interesting experiences I've collected and I'm collecting them to bring them into the light. And in the space of the light, the power and the potency of the judgment around those experiences diminishes. Can you feel that? And so another thing you can do, if you bring to mind a challenge that you are currently in the middle of, 
whatever it might be. Just one of them. You may have a list. Choose one of them and say, and ask yourself this question. As a great being of light, choosing to collect experiences What am I discovering about my light through this experience? We're giving you a moment to think on that for, for as a great being of light, as one connected to source ultimately, there's an awareness that there is nothing that happens in this dimension that is more potent than your light. So if you're collecting this experience, has your experience supported you in journeying perhaps on a on, in profound self-discovery has it helped you journey to a place of striving for wellness in ways that you never would have discovered with this where is the transcendence of your spirit and you discovering how amazing you are through this, that this experience that is not truly you, for you are a great being of light, that this experience is taking you on this pathway, but will never diminish your light. Now one could say, well, Ishtara, you're just taking us on this little imaginary thing and how is this real to my everyday life? And it would be said to you, if you, without judgment, choose as you're doing in this moment in time to validate yourself as a great being of light without holding your experiences against you that imagination and that feeling is allowing that vibration and the truth to emanate more strongly through the choices of these experiences your experiences are not holding you from your light. As was said earlier, you can bypass that and connect with your light and not allow those experiences to feel that you're not worthy of connecting with your light. And as you say to yourself, well, isn't this an interesting experience? You diminish some of the judgment you hold against yourself and allow an easier pathway to connect with who you really are non-conditionally. Remember, looking back in your history on this planet, all the good stuff was held conditionally. Look back through your history with some of the religious models, with some of the governmental and social structures, one needed to earn their way to anything that was good and worthy and righteous. So there's a collective construct and a habit of saying, I have to be worthy my life needs in this dimension of experience, my life needs to look perfect in order, order to be worthy to, to be in the light 
and it's going to be said today that you are worthy because you are unconditionally, non-conditionally. So if you can lighten the hold of the rightness of you or the wrongness of you relative to your choice of experiences and, and trust the light that you already are, it will expand and flow into and soften, if you will, the experiences that you're having in the dimension you chose. It's almost as if you could say to yourself, isn't it interesting and funny that I am this great being of light, I chose to come in and have a little 3D experience, and I've decided that's everything about who I am. I forgot. Let me go back to the remembering and remembering that was an experience I chose that's not me. And so you can take that bypass around it, even if you're still in the middle of it, and connect and just say to yourself, I know and I'm going to learn to trust that I am a great being of light. Even if I have evidence in my life that I have decided is contrary to that. Now, this is a big thing, and yet each and every one of you, if you made this a five-minute experience for yourself every single day, you would see a huge transformation in how seriously you take the experiences you've chose, chosen and seen the bigger experience of who you really are. Yeah, thank you. That was amazing, profound. Slowly coming back. Does Does anyone in the audience have any questions while Holly's still you still channeling Sharon? I can get back there. Sure. Let me. Um, I know Karen had a question. Karen had her hand raised a while ago. Karen, it's still there. Do you still want to ask a question? Well, it's not related to the session. It's about, and I, Alara, I just want to thank you so much for having the call yesterday with Lori and today, because I did just, when this call began, I got the call from hospice that my mother got kicked off. Ah. So I'm in a lot of trauma right yes. now and shock. And yes. uh, to have yesterday's call and today's call, it's just, I'm at a very peaceful place. I still feel the trauma and the energy. Yes. And, but this has just been so so kind and so expansive for my for everything that i'm going through right now my question to uh paul and holly is not associated with what just happened but about how to help my mother my mother is just last two years we thought she was going to go two years ago she's still here she's come so close to dying so many times and yet she just overcomes it she just gets better i mean so is there anything that can assist her in her process to pass. Um, so that's my question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, um, firstly, thank you, Karen. It's so lovely to hear your, your I would say, testimonial in, in feeling the shift and being in a different place. And you know, that kind of highlights us where we can we can make a choice and it's easier to make the choice when we have something in support of us, you know, like in this case, the shows, but the truth of the matter is, is we're not alone. We have our guides, we have our beings, we have the angels, etc., all around us all the time. So we can encourage everyone in the audience to, to call on your guides, call on the angels as regularly as you'd like. You, you can't wear them out, so to speak, to help you to be in that better space. Um, now, the other aspect, coming back directly to your question, you know, it's a challenging time for all of us. You know, I, I've lost my father and Holly nearly lost her father and he bounced back as well. Um, so 
you know, the, the honesty in this very short time frame, it's, it's hard to give you a comprehensive answer. So I apologize if what I'm doing here doesn't fully address what you're, what you're asking. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, is remember we're souls that come in for this journey and we, we come to this physical realm to grow, grow as a soul. So we, we choose particular experiences and in those experiences, usually challenging, um, we grow in enormous ways. We learn how to self-care. We know how to love. We know how to have compassion. You know, generally comes from those challenging times. Sometimes also when we relate a lot to the physical realm, we don't want to let it go. So that could be an aspect of why your mom doesn't want to continue on to her higher realm aspects of herself. <clears throat> because she's relating quite well to this physical one. She's a little afraid to move on. Um, that could be one piece, but there's so many other pieces as well. Sometimes we haven't finished the experience. You know, we, we still, there's still more that we can get out of this physical experience. See, the thing is, is our mind puts a limitation of this is good and this is bad. But as soon as we step back and see, start to see the perfection of the whole journey, you know, even in those difficult times now, there is a, a level of learning that she can relate to. Does this, is this me or isn't this me, you know? And so, but sometimes we have to experience the not me or the painful or the traumatic to say, that's not my vibration. So I, I, I choose something different. Um, you know, the best thing I can advise for you and the family is to really help and be there in support of her. You know, we do universal spheres to allow people to just move to that greater level of peace and balance within themselves. And then, it, and then it unfolds naturally. You know, they do kind of either get better and start to move to a new place in their life or, or they don't and they transition. In my world, there isn't a death anymore. There's just a transition because the soul doesn't die. It just, it, it, it's, it's immortal. It just simply transitions from, and there's only an aspect of our soul that's in a piece of our soul that's in this animating this body. So, so mm. that piece moves up to the higher realms. So, um, you know, the best things to be in, in support of someone through this time, you know, and it's challenging for all of us when we're in that space, you know, cause it's in our humanness, all sorts of craziness happens, you know, their behavior can be a little irrational or, you know, all those types of things. It's, it's hard, but um, I, that's not really a complete answer, but I hope that provides something. Holly has more to add. I always have more to add. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that, um, there, there are two aspects of this. There's your mom and there's you slash your family. So here, here's what's coming through around this is, can you trust that your mother's journey isn't over till she's out of her body? I mean, and, and that sounds silly, but it's like a big deal. Like, so in a sense, instead of waiting for her to die, you're like, wow, this is an interesting journey of on the edge, not on the edge, on the edge, not on the edge. So you don't, because I'm going to say something overly simplistic here. If she was supposed to die, she would have. And, and the same thing was with my dad. I'm like, oh my gosh, like last year was like a year that most people wouldn't want to live for me relative to a huge health thing with my dad. Like he was the guy who wouldn't die. And it's great now. He's, he's, he, but it was like, what, how is this happening? He defied all odds. And I'm sure your mother has too. So the key is like, hey, mom, I'm going to trust you on your journey. Isn't it interesting that you go to the brink and you come back and you go to the brink and you come back? Interesting choice that your soul's having this experience. Then for you, the key though, is to be in this place of allowing her journey to be hers so you don't have to take it on every time she gets close and comes back. So it, it's allowing you to be in that bigger space of the you being okay, and this is a bigger conversation, but can you feel okay whether she's here or whether she's gone, no matter how long it takes? So it takes some of the trauma out of your experience. Does that make sense to you? Yes, that, that everything. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. It's a big deal when we have people in our lives, no matter what their age are, 
Like we forget that this is a soul journey that they're on. We're all on our soul journey by ourselves. We just intersect with a lot of other people. And so then it impacts other people, but we have no say in what their journey is. That's the thing. So how do we stay in a sense of balance as, as our Venn diagram is overlapping other people's, how do we stay in balance even while they're on their journey and their iterations of whatever that means? Yeah, and I am so connected to my mom that when I have to go pee, she's on the toilet. <laughs> you know, so we are. So there is, I need to just have, let her have hers and pull myself back as well. So thank you very much for that. Thank mm -hmm. you, Paul and Holly. You're welcome. I'm going to drop one question in. It's going to be a big question for you. And it's something for you to sit with. How much of your life have you been so entangled with your mom that you've been, quote unquote, keeping her alive? Okay, a so, lot. So, <laughs> oh my god. So that, 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 that that's that's sorry you're going to have to play with that it's a big question but it, it's that that's what comes up also. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Karen. And that's where the I am worthy piece comes in too because I am worthy to have my own life. I'm, I'm worthy to have my own experiences. I'm worthy to have a lot of fun and enjoyment and so that can also come in as well. Cool. Um, all right, so we're going to take some more questions in just a minute. <laughs> I wanted to take a, just a few moments to talk about the special offers that um, you have. So for us, and so if you're on the live page, there is a button there. <laughs> it's like, I know I did it. It's like, what is it? So um, there's, there's a there's, you can press the button that says special offer, or you can go to awakenedhappinessnow.com forward slash Holly15. And so there's two special offers that um, Holly and Paul have for us, special offer A and B. Um, so do you guys want to talk about that? Sure, we'd love to. Um, gonna, did you want me to screen share? Sure, we can screen share. Okay, here we go. I'll just... I'll, I'll do it. You can't do it, so I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's perfect. So, so okay, so um, looking at special offer A, the well, the universal sphere. Um, so, the, the special offer A really, this is what we love, and that's why we put it as the first one because special offer B does contain um, a piece of special offer A. Holly and I love empowering people. We want you to feel empowered. We don't want you to be reliant on anyone or anything else. So, the the wonderful thing with this offer A is that there's the three personal universal sphere sessions. So you'll have three sessions with me. You get to experience the universal sphere. You can have something that you want some help with. We can work with you on that and you can see and feel because the universal sphere can't be explained very well by words. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean this all in all honesty because it's, it's really something um, of the, of the future. One might say it's multidimensional. Our brains have a lot of difficulty getting it but we can experience it. When we experience it, we really do start to understand it. And, and Alara knows exactly what we're talking about here, but it's hard to tell mm -hmm. that to you in words. So the three sessions allow you to experience the universal sphere. And then what, this empowering piece is we want you to learn to do the universal sphere because then you can do it and use it as often as you like to help yourself, your friends, your family, your animals, your business, you name it. This is where this is not like a traditional energy modality that we tend to use for healing. And I apologize for this sort of generalization, but the universal sphere is, is teach. It's not a healing modality. It's much, much more than that. It's, it's a, it's a tool to help us in our ascension so that we can use it for just about anything, you know, whether it's our business, our health, our friends, our relationships, our situations. In fact, situations are one of the most common things we use the universal sphere for. So, you know, it could be, challenges at work it could be you know challenges with a you know a relationship or a problem or something with your children or whatever it may be so then you can use the sphere as often as you like to help that shift and then the bonus that we really want to add into this is you know we teach this literally almost every month online so you don't have to be you know here where we are you can do it all online we do it live and but before we start the program, you can get into it straight away. Most of us love kind of getting into something straight away. So the quick start program means you can actually learn about the universal sphere and start to play with it before you even do the online workshop. So that whole thing gives a wonderful encompassing package. 
And as I say, we reduced it enormously. Um, this isn't a digital download. This is all us, all physical labor stuff. So, um, um, but you know, it's a wonderful price. And then, thanks, Alara. Keep please keep going. Yeah. So again, special life about the pricing. Um, sure. So, off you go. Oh well, just if you you can see it on there, the the value of each one of those, all of those things individually, and actually the bonus nobody can connect with unless you do something like this. So it's six hundred nineteen dollars, and for for all of you listening, we'll do all of it for two ninety seven. And if you notice, that's the cost of the Universal Sphere class alone. So it's mm -hmm. like you're getting all <laughs> the other things added onto it, and it's really meaningful to take to experience the sessions and also take the course because you've got it like from both sides you're really integrating and feeling it and experiencing it and we do offer a two payment option if people want to do that you know the only thing we'll just let the whole audience know though is if you do the two payment option obviously you won't be able to attend the workshop and stuff until the two payments are done but mm -hmm. um just like being transparent and letting everyone know and then for, for offer b is really just that subset of just if you want to simply experience it. You know, sometimes we want to just dip our toe in the water and see what the water feels like first before we, you know, fully jump in. So, you know, it's nice to have that other option. So same thing here. You can do the three Universal Sphere sessions with me um, and you, you get to experience it. So, again, as you can see, that's normally 225 for the three sessions uh, with, with me. Um, but in this case, we're, we're offering it to you at 120. So you, you, there's a discount, and, and also you know you get to experience it. And sometimes you know we we might use one the one universal sphere to fix one thing, another universal sphere to fix something else, another universal sphere to fix you know another thing again. So you know it really it's a wonderful ability to simply experience it, and that's what this is what I love. You have to experience this thing because it's it's really hard to explain. Uh, it just it's almost like love, you know, how do you sort of explain love? It's a feeling that you've just got to experience. Yeah, it's very experiential, you know, and even um, just by talking about it, you don't even get it. But today, even, you know, experiencing the energy of Ishtara, that it's it's not even that. It's, it's, that's a separate total other energy, you know, in itself. So the universal sphere, you know, for me, when, when I first had the first session with Paul, it was, oh my God, it was so nice. And I felt it for a long time, you know, um, it, it was amazing. It's like, wow. And it's like, I didn't have to do anything, right? <laughs> you did it all. And then when I did the training, it was like, wow, this is easy. <laughs> it was so easy. And again, we, we were able to experience it while we were learning. Um, but it, 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 uh, each time that you do it, I find that the experience is similar, you know, uh, but slightly different and just keeps getting easier and easier. And then it, it just, now it feels like there's, uh, it's just, you know, five minutes, you know, and, um, not even right. It's just like, yeah, got it. <laughs> it's okay. Right. You're so spot on, Alara, you know, and, and actually as time goes by, as we keep doing them regularly, it, it literally almost transitions into a state of being, you know, where you just really, you know, each time you do a sphere, you're raising your consciousness. And then as you keep doing that, it's like when we remind each other of things, yeah. just after a while, we just start to stay there more and more and more. And then that being the case, you know, life kind of just flows it really is like being in the flow. You know, you start to see how all of the incredible synchronicities happen, how what you need just simply just is there when you need it. And all the manifestations really just start to be in a greater level of support of ourselves, all of us, in what we want and where we're going. And it, it's really incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Universal Sphere sessions, you know, can be used for anything and everything, you know, at... Um, I used it, you know, for like when I did the session with you, Paul, it was for my neck because my neck was, or my throat. I forget now. <laughs> I think it was my throat. It was, your throat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was my throat because it was something that had been dragging for months, you know, and, um, and we did the session and within, I would say like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like that, but I noticed within the next two weeks, it was completely gone. It was, mm. it's like, oh, and that was the last thing I did, you know? <laughs> 
So I hadn't done anything else after that for my throat. That was the last thing I did. It's like, oh, cool. But since then, I've used it for, you know, uh, my business, <laughs> um, my space, you know. Um, this, I mean, I use it all the time now, it seems, you know, for everything. And, and why not, right? Why not? That's it. Why not? Yeah, it's like it's like an energetic expansion into the highest potential in any given moment of whatever it is. I mean, we use universal spheres because we travel a lot. We always use universal spheres on our way to the airport just for ease, grace, flow through, mm -hmm. you know, all the checkpoints and the luggage and the transitions on planes and, you know, and um, and it's not that, you know, sometimes things still happen, but we navigate our way through it a lot more easily and gracefully. And then also sometimes things happen really magically. Yeah. So it's not always about the events lining up. It's how we are being in the middle of all of it also. And Alara, can I give just a few examples of our experience of what people have had with the universal sphere? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for example, you know, um, a lady who was also a practitioner, she, she was pregnant and she had a, um, it was a couple of weeks before she was due to give birth. There was an ultrasound and they showed that on the ultrasound that several organs of her baby were actually outside its body. And so she posted on our universal sphere practitioners secret group, which is what we have. Um, you know, please, can I have some spheres to help myself and my baby with this, you know, what was happening. And, um, Two weeks later, the baby was born completely naturally with all of its organs inside its body. It did need a minor, like a hernia type surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, did anything different happen? No. Can we prove that it's the universal sphere? No. In fact, in almost 100% of the times, we can't prove that it's the universal sphere that did it. But nothing else changed. And we do have practitioners who are doctors and they said that that, that doesn't happen. The child, mm -hmm. child's normally born with the organs outside its body and then they surgically put them back in so incredible miracle you know just you know people that shift to a greater level of happiness within themselves you know people that are looking for homes and they feel that stuckness that we do have you know and they can't find their home and one sphere suddenly within you know just recently holly's done some spheres for two of her separate clients with you know multi-million dollar homes that have been on the market for like eight months holly does a couple Years. of spheres sorry, years, Holly does a couple of spheres for them. And within a week, they now both have offers on them. I'm not sure. I haven't heard about the second one, but the first one, it went into escrow. So nothing else changed, but suddenly, <laughs> just, you know, suddenly, you know, the, the stuckness just dissolves. Um, so hmm. I just want to add that to that, you know, recently my aunt has been asking me because she's wanting to sell her house for a while now and it's not selling and her agent wants her to lower the price. And I'm like, no, 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 don't lower the price. And I, I was just asking myself today, just a few hours before this call, I was thinking, okay, what, what can I do to help her to sell her house? Because she's, you know, like, she's like, she keeps asking me, it's like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And you just... You just talked about it. It's like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's full, cool about the thing with the property? Just as, you know, this is why it works way beyond just, this isn't just a healing modality, is it's, it, if you do it for the house, for your aunt, basically for everyone involved, including the land underneath the house, mm -hmm. including the real estate agents and their point of view, and allowing the house to have the freedom of its energy to call in its next owner, it, that, that's kind of how it works. Is yeah. So you're just expanding its field of potential. And um, this one house that I did was, has been not lived in consistently for three years while the house has been on the market. And when I was doing the spheres, the house was very sad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it just, it was able to actually emotion, and that may sound totally crazy to some of you, I'm sorry, but the, you know, the <laughs> house is there to support and create, create structure and hold the space for who lives there. And it's in a sense, the house wasn't on purpose mm -hmm. and, right. and the house wanted to have purpose again. So working with the universal spheres can, can help with that as well To So the house's destiny, if you will, is fulfilled as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I've told her that. I said, talk to the house, ask it to bring the new people that want to live there, you know, to that. But she's not into energy and all that kind of stuff. So she probably didn't do it. <laughs> but you could do spheres for everyone involved, though, too. Yeah. Because sometimes real estate agents have points of view like, oh, this is the house that doesn't sell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. See, I was asking, ask, and you shall receive. <laughs> really, it, it does happen. Um, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's the thing is like, it's not just for physical, like your body. It's not just for emotions. It's not just for manifesting. Mm, um, you know, it can be for manifesting opportunities and possibilities, right? Clients and, and things like that. Um, I'm just trying to think of, you know, even cars, you know, I mean, I, my husband used to say that, you know, I had a magic garage because our car, you know, would be in the garage and there'd be something wrong with it. It's like, no, 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 don't worry. It'll be fine. It'll, it's okay. It'll be fine. By the next day, it was perfectly fine. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's, like, it's fine. <laughs> don't worry. Should we, should we allow everyone to have a little bit of an experience with it? I mean, it's more fun. We, we, you and I can, we can all talk about this oh, for know. ages. Why, why don't we yes. do the experience piece and then everyone can enjoy that experience so, so yeah yeah we'll do that um nick just had a question about the universal sphere and it's is the universal sphere at all similar in experience and effect as to using quantum vortex energy and i'm like i have no idea <laughs> um i so i i can answer it at a big level because if quantum vortex energy is actually like a thing like a modality i i don't know it but what we're doing is, in a sense, bringing in the quantum field into your 3D experience. So you're moving into a space outside of time and space and literally expanding your <clears throat> vibrational reality so that you are working. I mean, when, when we say things are miraculous, which we see all the time with the universal sphere, you know, miracles are things that we just don't know and understand and expect in this dimension. And, and so we're having like an out of dimension experience. And, and that's what this is. This is bringing in this unified field of all that is into our space so that we can have things fall away, come back into balance. I mean, healing is is when things return to whatever their natural state of vibrancy is. That's what healing is. So anything that's out of alignment, out of balance, has an opportunity to right itself. And we say, oh, wow, look at that. Look at what happened there. So I, I don't know what quantum vortex energy is, but this is definitely a quantum field that we're working in. And I think just to expand on that, which hopefully also helps a little bit more, Nikki, is... You know, Ishtara calls it, uh, she uses the term which words don't really do justice. She calls it the perfect universal resonance, which is the perfection of all that is, everything that we know and everything that we don't know. So because the universal sphere is multidimensional, what we're doing is we're starting to, the, the perfection of all that is, the multidimensional aspect is around us all the time anyway. It's not, it's not out there, it's right here. And as we're able to tap into that, what's happening is we're, as divine beings, we can connect to the perfection of all that is because we are divine. So as we're immersed in that, everything that we are involved in in the moment, whether it's ourselves or the situation, whatever it may be, is also immersed in that perfection, which changes the vibration, which then allows it to move to a new state. So just like Holly said, a greater expansion you know, the expansion of the house, you know, it could be expansion or, or, you know, the helping of the person with their balance, with their health or the baby, whatever it may be. So I hope that also expands a little bit more on that. Nikki. Well, thank you. And Nikki, did you have a question? I see. I, I wanted, can I address Nikki's question up here yeah. about her boyfriend's father? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, this is going to be an indirect answer, Nikki. Okay. Um, because he wants you to know that he's still with you in spirit. And the fact that he called you the light, he was giving that to you as a gift for you to hold that space for you. Mm. So 
if he's not there and you feel like you're missing something because he's not there, he was there gifting you that to, to hold the, that he saw you that way and for you to now hold that for yourself. That's his gift to you. Okay. And um, Polly, when you did your session and you said, imagine a situation that is problematic or whatever, um, what came to mind is how my boyfriend behaved after his dad's transition i mean he really didn't want any part of me and when you asked about that light i thought and he said i just i i just can't right now he i can't and I, now i know why he couldn't it's because he was in such a deep dark place of grief and sorrow that my light was just too much for him and that's just not where he wanted he was just not there mm -hmm. it's yeah. what came is what came to me mm -hmm. and so how does that realization feel to you it's fine because you know i've grown so much spiritually and things that present themselves as problematic and frustrating to me and i'm pushing and trying i'm like okay it's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. So then I rein myself in, I, I step back and I ask my higher self and my guides and, and God, what, what, what is this? What am I supposed to do? And usually I'll, I'll hear an answer. And that's another thing that I wanted to ask you. The answers I usually hear sound just like my own voice. They are. Oh, okay. Isn't it great that you have that much wisdom inside of you? I think so. I just need to cultivate it more and, and, and step out into the world to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, we're, Thank we're you, Paul. You're applauding me. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're expecting guidance to look and sound different than us, yes. but it's, it is ultimately all coming from within us. So a lot of, you know, like a lot of it, sounds just like us. Well, I, you know, we talk about this a lot in the Akashic Records. People want that information to sound like something other than them. And it's like, it's you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It's going right. to sound a lot like you. And then it's very reinforcing for you to grow. And this is appropriate for everyone here. If, if it sounds like us, we can stop diminishing that and actually say, look at me. Like, I really do have this knowledge and wisdom out inside of me naturally and inherently. And I don't always have to go out to someone else to give me the advice. I'm actually discovering that it is me. And so that's what's so much fun about when the guidance feels like us. It's like, yay, great. Look at me. Look at how potent I am. But then the natural thing for us to do is to doubt. Oh, yeah, that's your ego talking trash or, you know. I think the piece in that is, you know, we have can have multiple personalities within us, you know, as well as our higher self. If that information feels uplifting, if it feels good, you know, trust it. You know, it's because sometimes the mind can come in and do a little bit of a trick on us. And, you sure. know, when there's that level of judgment and you can feel that within yourself, you know, you, you trust your feelings. If it feels good, um, even if the mind's going, oh, I'm not so sure about that, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but if it feels good. Trust it. You know? Sure. 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 Thanks, Nikki. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, just going to mute you. All right. So let's, what, did I mute you? No. Hold on. So we have a, a question from MF1950. <laughs> she didn't write it in. Yes. You, Caroline. Oh, hi, Caroline. <laughs> you, did you want to type your question in, Caroline? Yeah, okay. she's writing. She's writing it. Because she's at work, so she can't be um, the video. Away. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nick is excited for the process, for the group universal sphere process we're going to do in just a minute. Me too. Yay. <laughs> so while while Caroline is um, typing, we'll should just we just, explain it. just set it up? Yeah. Um, 
great suggestions. So just while Caroline's typing, and I'll just kind of frame our group experiences we're about to do. So, so what I'd like everyone to do is start to think about what is it something that you would like some help with? It can be anything, literally it doesn't, you know, it can be health, it can be situation. Situations are the most common thing, it could be a relationship, you know, it could be anything. And then as part of that piece, look, allow yourself to step back and start to look at what's on the other side of that. What is the perfection of that, so to speak? So I'm just going to give you an answer, an example to just try and help frame it. So say, for example, um, you know, just I'm, I'm feeling unwell, you know, so I'm, I'm feeling small because it hurts and I'm not happy with that. I don't like it. But what about if I'm feeling incredibly well, I'm outside, I'm enjoying stuff, I'm having a lot of fun because I have the ability to do things. So, so look at the end result of what you ultimately want. So I hope that, did you want to explain and expand a little bit more on that? So, so have a look at the, think about what you want some help with and then take yourself to a place where you can actually look at say the, the ideal end result not worrying about the steps in between. So, and then when we do the live universal, when I do the universal sphere group session here, um, there will be a few moments of silence because obviously I'm just going to be doing a universal sphere here, but because it exists out of time and space, it'll help everyone on this call and everyone on the replay with equal effectiveness. This is the really cool thing. This is where our mind doesn't get it very well. And then all you need to do is just simply relax as we're doing the universal sphere, the group universal sphere, and just hold that space of the, of the end result that you want. You know? mm -hmm. So, so whatever that may be, and, and that's all you need to do. And I'll, I'll mention a few things as we're going, just so there isn't this complete silence, but um, it's really as simple as that. That's what's so cool. So, yeah. and I, and and I so think, Mary's question is if, that no one's required to accept this unless they choose it. Absolutely not. Yeah. This is all happening within the space of your free will. And it's a great question. Thank you for asking it, Mary, because also it goes to this idea that we really are working in a place, honestly, we haven't said it this way yet. It's love and light and for the highest and best of everyone. The, it, it is literally on the level of a prayer. And so you can pray for anybody all you want, right? And it's still, you can't inflict a prayer on anyone. They're gonna, you can do it and the energy goes out and then people move within the energy of your prayer however they need to and it's the same with the universal sphere. So there will be nothing that is going to come into your field that you're not ready, willing and able to accept. And if you're not gonna choose it, then it's, it's fine. You know, what, whatever feels resonant with you. And, and um, Caroline finished typing a question. I, I love that. You know, this is where we call light workers, you know, the sort of generalized term of light workers. I, I give a lot of love. And so when I feel someone, I feel a lot and it feels genuine, loving and of the light. Am I intruding? Well, Holly, I'm sure can add on this as well, but you know, no. I mean, firstly, the whole idea is as we start to learn that we're not separate and we're all connected, we are all divine beings and we're connected to each other in many different ways. When you give love to someone else, it's literally you're talking about a higher level vibration. Love is a higher level of vibration. It, it isn't exactly, but it's the analogy is like a prayer. You don't, as Holly mentioned earlier with the universal sphere, you don't have to ask someone's permission to do a prayer because you, you can't harm someone with a prayer. And it's the same thing when you give love to people. And the cool thing is we start to realize how connected we are as we start to share the love backwards and forwards. And this is a piece that I, I know and, and, and experience, but can't give you that engineering answer to it. The love actually gets bigger and bigger. So as we share more and love backwards and forwards between each other, it literally amplifies. It's really cool. So, you know, no, you're not intruding, you know, and again, there's, there's different levels of, you know, what we can access with people and things like that. But giving love is never going to hurt anyone, you know, even if they choose not to at that point in time and the soul ultimately has freedom of choice anyway. 
So whether it chooses to accept that love or whether it chooses to embody it or reject it, you know, but you're, you're not doing any harm. So do you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think, I think it's great. And the second thing she said there is, am I intruding when I unconditionally send love and light? And the key word there is the unconditional piece mm -hmm. of it. If it truly is unconditional, like I see these people and I just feel love and I'm going to just share my love with them. <laughs> And especially because it sounds like she's just doing it, you know, without them knowing. So she's not going up and intruding, as she's saying, in her space, in their space. If it's truly unconditional and you're not looking for any particular outcome, there can be no downside to that at all. Mm -hmm. And because um, most of us respond quite well to a sense of unconditional love, yeah. most because it's our inherent vibration, right? Mm -hmm. This is really who we are. It's not just a metaphysical idea or a spiritual idea. It really is a field of love. And and when it's like Paul was talking about earlier, these things are so, all we know is when we're in the space of love, but if you try to describe love, it, it defies description. It gets a little slippery because it's a state of being. It's not, it, it it doesn't have form and structure. We just know when we're in the space of it. Yeah. So there, from our perspective, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not intrusive because you're not intruding with it. You're offering it up unconditionally. And we all know from our personal experience, when you receive love, you just feel so much better. You feel expansive. You know, when you're being berated or, or you know, um, you're in trouble and all the rest of it, you, you feel more compressed you feel smaller than you really are so to me that's a wonderful like litmus paper test you know the love is just going to help us expand to more of who we really are should we do the session now yeah should we do should we do the group universal sphere alara yes yes let's do it okay okay so hopefully everyone has something that you would like some help with and if you don't that's okay too it, it really doesn't matter because the universal sphere we're dealing with um, universal energies here that there's a universal intelligence and it knows exactly what we need anyway so so now let's let's just get ourselves physically into a nice comfortable position and that just takes any you know the body pieces out of it so to speak and then let's just take a nice lovely deep breath in and as you take this beautiful deep breath in simply just draw some light into yourself because remember we primarily are light beings and as you do so, just allow that light to come in. Whatever it is, nice, beautiful, bright light. Could be white light, yellow light, pink light, green light. Just bring that into you. Allow that light to nourish everything with you. And then as you breathe out, simply just allow the worries or concerns to go out with the out breath and get smaller into their true perspective, quite small in the grand scheme of things. Take another deep breath in. Bring more beautiful, bright light into yourself and feel as you really become more expansive and just allow that light to fill you up so you're larger than who you are in your physical form. You just allow yourself to settle into that. Breathe out, let any of the worries and concerns again get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And take another beautiful deep breath in. As you do, draw more light into yourself, feel lighter, more radiant. And as you breathe out, bring the focus down to this place of your heart. Allow yourself to move to a place of feeling. So we're moving out of the mind space now into a place of feeling, allowing our higher self, the feeling part of us to start to, to come into the forefront and just be in that place of just feeling. And in this place of relaxing, just hold in your mind's eye the end result of whatever it is that you want so if you have a particular challenge as we described before look at the wonderful end so the happiness the freedom the great health or whatever it is that's that's sort of fixed as we might say but focus on that piece and then just be in this openness and as you in this openness i'm starting to do the group universal sphere now for all of us From this place, you may start to just notice 
almost like a calmness comes in. You feel this calm centeredness. And why wouldn't you, if you're being more connected to your higher self, why wouldn't you be calm? from this place, just simply be. After all, we are beings. And again, just as a feather would rest on the surface of a lake that's like a piece of glass, all that wonderful end result. It's the vibration, the wonderful feelings. Remember you're in this place of feeling. You may even start to notice how you feel a little bit more expansive. in this place, it feels more natural who you really are. Just notice the peace. Do you feel the perfection of all that is? It almost feels like a weight is taken off your shoulders. Notice how this feels more like who you really are. Notice how your breathing has become more regular. Feel as you're just being in this wonderful space, as you're immersed in the perfection of all that is. Now from the space, just simply take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, just slowly allow yourself to come back to the room that you're in, knowing and trusting that this is this, where you've just been is always there. It's not something that's out of reach. You can be there anytime you like. It is you, it's who you really are. And trust that whatever it is that you have requested at this point in time will simply keep your focus on the positive end results and just know that this energies of what's happening now with the universal sphere will bring in solution energy and allow everything to unfold as it's meant to. 
and then whenever you're ready, just slowly open up your eyes and welcome back. And, and I just say to everyone now, how do you feel now? This is literally sort of six or so minutes after when we started. Um, how often in your real world can you in six minutes you move to the place where you feel right now? So thanks, Mary. Quiet. Um, <laughs> Nikki said Ka one. Caroline said light and bright and sweetly and loving. So this is who you really are. This is why it's such an incredible tool to help us remember who we are. Mm, that's beautiful. Nikki said she's going to sign up. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki said, I will sign up, Paul. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, this is, this is such a wonderful place to be in right now. And we, the thing I love about the universal sphere is people can spend years, tens of years learning to meditate, to try and even start to get to what we're at now. We can get there in literally five minutes. It is so incredible. So, you know, but again, you have to experience it. This is what I love. And the cool thing is, is when you listen to the replay, it'll work just as well. <laughs> and Lisa says it's the most peaceful and centered feeling I've ever felt. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. That is so cool. It was wonderful to be back here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Feels wonderful back, back here, very neutral and natural. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. That's so cool. You know, it, it really is. And I, I, I choose to be in this space, you know, and I encourage everyone else to choose to be in this space. And when you are, the universe goes, okay. And it'll yeah. just give you more of the space. And, and this is home energy. This is why it feels good. Yeah. Is at, when we talk about ascension, I mean, we're, we get this and more of this. Yeah. And that's why it feels so good because we are vibrating more in this moment, consciously, intentionally, our natural state. Yeah. This is who we are. Yeah. And, and what's fun about learning to do the universal sphere is you have an opportunity to bring yourself back here and bring yourself back here and bring yourself back here. And you can make it an intentional conscious experience as often as you wish versus waiting and hoping and you know wishing that it might come by today we'll see if the gods aligned or <laughs> <laughs> and and that that's what's been so potent about it for us is that we we have a choice to say yes to it now and 10 minutes from it because you can't od on universal spheres you're what you're doing is like you just keep course correcting back to your home yeah energy Beautiful. I love that. And, and that's the thing. It's like you can do this as many times as you like, you know, to be in this really expansive and light space. And when you're in this expansive and light space, it's so peaceful. <laughs> and it's like, then you can create more, you know, create, do, like, do whatever it is that you want to do. Because sometimes, you know, it's like, I don't know, we stop ourselves, but when we're in this energy, it's like, oh, this is great. So much joy and peace and ease. It's like, oh, fun. You know, and it's, it's a fun energy. And the more of that that we can experience every day, the more of that shows up in our lives as well, right? I choose the happy door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you know, the show is called Awaken to Happiness Now, right? Right. <laughs> so appropriate. <laughs> I'm always choosing the happy door. What brings me happiness? What brings me joy? What brings me ease? Let's do that, you know? Um, right. More, please. <laughs> yeah, more, please. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, if you would like to, again, you can, you know, check out the special offers that are there. Um, and if you want to, you know, just experience the Universal Spheres with Paul, you can get the three-session package. Or you can get the three-session package plus the training plus the quick start for two ninety seven, dollars and um, use these Universal Sphere and the energy of it, you know, as often as you'd like, you know, for yourself and for others. And I, and, um, I know that Holly, you had mentioned, you know, there's a, there's a group that you have, 
uh, I'm in there, where people request spheres regularly and people are constantly sending spheres as well. So it's a community where you receive a lot of support, which is beautiful. Yeah, Paul and I both really believe in community and connection long after the class is over. I, I'm sure all of us have taken classes and you learn something really good and then you're like, and now what? <laughs> and you sort of feel like you're cast adrift by it. And and so we do have, it's, it is on Facebook, but it's a private Facebook page and everyone on there has learned to do the universal sphere. There are people from all over the world. And so it's a place where we connect and we actually have regular practitioner calls. Practitioner doesn't mean, it just means you use the universal sphere. We have regular calls and we also have another level of um, working with the universal sphere where it's all about your personal development. And it has been the most astounding thing that we've done over the last year that Ishtara asked us to do. And it has knocked our socks off. We've just starting our second year of it. And so we like the way that even though we're an international group, we have all these ways to continue to stay in touch, support each other and, and grow together with it. And that's what Ishtar has asked us to do. And so Paul and Holly here are, we're doing our best, you know, pedaling our bike, um, <laughs> bringing this out to the world as a, as a new way of being and relating to our light and, and all that's around us. Absolutely. Um, and thank you. And <laughs> thank you everyone for being here. And I, if I missed your question, I do apologize. It's some, it might be somewhere there in the chat thread, but we'll definitely have to have um, Holly and Paul back again to do more of this. And, you know, they do so much other stuff as well, not just the universal sphere. So who knows, maybe next time we'll talk about entity clearing <laughs> or Akashic <laughs> Records or... <laughs> We'll see. And yeah, I love doing the Zoom. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Um, oh, hi, Christine. This is oh, this Christine Christine's Williams. in Italy. <laughs> Wonderful. Yay. Christine, you'll be our first person in Italy. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Cool. Love it. Good. Um, all right, so is there anything else that we needed to touch on? I mean, I know we went long again. Today. Oh, I'm going to just say to Christine that the class in May, we have timed for Europe. So yes. it's a more reasonable time for you. Yes. So if you're going to sign up for the <laughs> class as well, look at the class on May and hopefully your schedule will arrange it. So you're, because we've had people in Europe be up in the middle of the night and, yeah. but this is better, like a lark. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not made it at all because it's like it's the middle of the night yeah right <laughs> so it's it's timed it's time for europe yay how does it get burn that thank you uh and michelle says thank you especially for the channeling which yeah it was that was wonderful wasn't it it's like wow powerful ishtara is a powerful being of light for sure she um, is mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to connect with her i'm gonna have to talk to her some more it's like i just yeah it's a <laughs> powerful energy <laughs> As soon as I say that, I feel her presence, like, okay. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for your divine service work, Holly, Paul, and Alara. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's really fun to connect yes. with all of you. It's lovely to see your wonderful smiling faces today as well. Isn't, it, isn't this great? I know, right? Yeah. I like it. I love it. So, um, yeah, so go away. Oh, I, I should just type it in here really quickly, just in case you guys still want to know. I wake up happiness now dot com or slash holly 15 but i'll be sending out the emails shortly so well great <laughs> takes me a little while sometimes at night time it's like oh, i gotta go do that stuff too um but yeah thank you and this was beautiful and i love the energy and thank you for you know i'm so glad that you brought up the part about the uh selling the houses because i was asking for that earlier today and <laughs> you talked about it and it was perfect like oh yeah i can do that so thank you my aunt will be very happy. <laughs> I'm doing something. She'll be so happy. So <laughs> she's like desperate. Um, Thank you, all right. Laura, for letting us talk with you and to this lovely audience. Thank you so much for all that you do in sharing the wisdom of so many. Uh, thank you. This was such a blessing for me too. I really enjoyed it. I love the energy. I'm still feeling it, you know, and for all of you, you can go back and watch this again so that you can experience the channel again or the, the group session, the, the group universal sphere again, because it'll be on YouTube and, or you can also listen to the podcast and, you know, 
experience it again or experience like choose a different situation if you want, you know, for the, for, the, for, for some of the processes that we did. So yeah, cool. It's not great. It's not great. You can do this over and over again as many times as you want. Yep. <laughs> yep. I love it. All right, thank you so much. And uh, thank everyone. I'll be sending out the email shortly. And until next time, continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. Bye. Bye for now.